That's how much work. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so my, thanks. my presentation is uh, Nginx versus Apache, a table of two servers. Uh, in case anybody doesn't know, Nginx is an alternative server, uh, web, web server. Uh, so a little bit of history of why uh, we recently made a switch from Apache over to Nginx. Uh, we had in our application some users calling and complaining that they'd be browsing through the site and all of a sudden their session would just kind of die. No, no, no sane reason for doing so. And then they'd wait 30 seconds and their request would be, be filled in and the page would paint. Uh, when we went to go look at it, it turns out that other users on the site were making requests of some long running actions like um, go out and show me all of the log entries for a particular device over the last month. It'd take a long time to go do that query and generate the response. Well, it turns out that the real root cause of that was mongrel. So as most, most of you know mongrel is uh, single processing, so it's geared to handle one request at a time. If mongrel gets multiple requests, it will queue them. The problem is that Apache uh, and their proxy balancer doesn't know that once it sends a request to a particular mongrel, that it shouldn't send a second request. And it's just a very simple round robin. It starts with the first one and moves through and comes back to the top and keeps proceeding. So what happened is, if that user was the unlucky one to be hitting the same mongrel that the long standing request would be at, their request would be queued behind theirs. As soon as the long standing request was done, theirs would be serviced and returned to them. So it looked like their sessions were stalling out for no, no good reason. Um, so I've been hearing about Nginx for a while from talks I've heard from uh, Ezra, I can't pronounce his last name, I'll just call him Ezra Z. Uh, so here, let me give it a try. There have been some talks about it, it being better in terms of how it does is its uh, proxy balancing to Mongol clusters. So I downloaded the source, uh, very simple compile, dot slash configure, answer a few questions if it pumps, uh, make, make install, off you go. Uh, so then it turned out, well, how am I going to convert my Apache configuration files into Nginx configuration files? And I was, I was pretty lucky because I had already modularized all of our Apache configs and tried to reduce a lot of the redundancy we had in our configurations into include files. Uh, so I just started, made a copy of all my Apache configs into an Nginx directory and then went section by section trying to convert them, which was pretty straightforward except for the fact that documentation on Nginx is very, very lacking. Um, most of the documentation is kind of roughly translated from the Russian uh, original documentation and people, it looks like people on the, the wiki have gone through and cleaned up a lot of it, but some of it is still uh, lacking. Uh, well, it turns out that Nginx didn't solve my problem. Uh, after all of that, after about uh, a couple hours of going through and trying to figure out why well, things weren't working in Nginx, uh, it turns out that Nginx also can't yet rate limit uh, the uh, proxy balancer connections. Uh, so it essentially suffers the same flaw that Apache does. Uh, but apparently Nginx is getting updated very frequently, uh, and the uh, rate limiting is going to be coming very, very soon, or so they say. Um, so it turns out the solution to my original problem was to put uh, HA proxy or hot proxy between Nginx and Mongrel. So Nginx now proxy balances to a single port of HA proxy, which then proxies off to my batch of Mongrels. And HA proxy can rate limit just fine. Does it really well. Uh, the HA proxy configuration file is like four lines long. Uh, so why did we stick with Nginx if it didn't solve any of our problems? Um, there's a really, really much smaller footprint for Nginx. Uh, so we started running uh, Apache, and we had mon monitoring our Apache instance. And in the beginning, we'd get these warnings, Apache's consumed more than 100 megs. Okay, fine. Tell Monit 200 megs. Apache's concerned, consumed more than 200 megs. Fine. Okay, Apache, you now going to have 300 megs. Um, we booted up Nginx, we ran it, got users to load, everything hitting. I've never seen it go above two megs of memory usage, ever. Uh, it's amazing, amazing difference. Uh, so if anybody's running a VPS and they don't want to spend extra for memory, I'd seriously suggest you look at Nginx uh, as opposed to Apache. Unless you're doing some weird stuff with Apache modules, Nginx can do pretty much everything Apache can. Uh, one of the cool things that's coming in Nginx is they're going to uh, swap out the rewrite engine, which is today pretty good. Uh, but the next version apparently will have a full uh, scripting language. 
uh, which will make rewrites really, really easy. Uh, and again, soon have the uh, great limiting proxy balancer. And one thing that I found very easy to do in Nginx that was a real pain in Apache is to separate out my logs by type. So I want all of my Rails uh, action uh, requests to be logged to one file. I want all my asset requests to be logged to another file. Uh, all my big content requests to be logged to a third file. That was really a pain to get set up in the patch. It was dead easy in Nginx. So briefly, I'm going to run through a couple of configs. The, these are going to be a little bit like eye charts. Uh, but in case you're curious, you can come see me afterwards, and we'll go through them. Um, so this is, this is uh, part of our configuration where we ensure that certain requests are hitting HTTPS instead of HTTP. So um, server, listen 80, set the root, uh, uh, set the logging style, a whole bunch of includes. And then this big, uh, if the URI matches this regular expression, uh, or actually it doesn't match JavaScript's content style sheet, images, or player, then I'm going to rewrite that request to HTTPS, the host that it came from, and the request URI, redirect, and then break says don't process anything else. Uh, and then we have essentially the same thing for server, listen on 443, and all our includes. That came from essentially the same uh, Apache config, but you've got to do these kind of weird uh, rewrite conditions and then kind of chain them along to these rules. Uh, and that just didn't seem as easy as this if style. Uh, so whereas the Apache is very much, um, you've got to kind of look across multiple lines to kind of understand what's going on. Uh, the Nginx stuff just reads like code. Uh, Here's another example. This is the standard uh, check for maintenance file and redirect from Rails. And redirect condition document root system maintenance file exists. Uh, then if it's not maintenance HTML and it's not an image, then rewrite this rule. In Nginx, it's essentially, if this file exists, rewrite this HTML last break. That easy. Uh, and then again, here's an example where uh, if the file for the request file name exi doesn't exist on disk, then I'm going to assume this is a Rails request and set the access log to my Rails access log and then proxy pass it to my, my module set. So you can have if conditionals and do things like set what, what logging style and what logging file things are going to go to. Uh, so if you want to see more of the logging stuff, just come find me later and be happy to walk you through. My intention is to post both my Apache configs and my Nginx configs side by side on my blog because there aren't very many good examples of full Nginx configs. Uh, I think seeing them side by side would really help. Um, that's my blog. And it's also syndicated in the Tampa Ruby uh, feed, so you can see it there. Uh, this is the main Nginx config, and this is a this is a pretty good English version of the of the wiki. Yeah, if anybody else has a blog. Tell us where it is, and we'll put it in, your, well, in our feed aggregator. Any questions? Just one, one thought. Have you considered, instead of allowing blocking, um, blocking things to occur in Rails, to maybe background it using something like background DRB? Yeah. I, so I don't know much about it, but I've read some. Yeah. So um, this was the really kind of like get it done. Yeah, uh, right. no, of, of fixing that problem. So we still have the original problem, which is when a user goes to that particular page, they may be waiting 30, 45 seconds for that request to come back and, and be satisfied. So we haven't, we haven't solved the original problem, but at least we've isolated so that only that user feels the pain and the other users at this point don't. But yeah, we need, we need to do something with background DRB to try and you know, put up an ice cream saying, hey, we're, we're satisfying your request, and then mm -hmm. that mock is now it. free to service yeah. others, and then when the request is satisfied, do some some Ajax post back to you in their data. Uh, is that what you were asking about background DRB? Uh, for that and actually for something else. So um, whoever was the background DRB person, I need to ask you some questions later because it's acting really weird. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm an expert, but I'll definitely. So I, I can't get past the first line of the example, so oh. you're probably more of an expert than I am at this point. Um, so, but so far, we've been running Nginx in production for probably three weeks, and we haven't had a hiccup yet. So it's, it's, it's really, really solid. And we're, we're kind of lucky. There's, there's little uh, uh, kind of pushback on being able to make those changes. So we just, we just did it. So we'll see what happens. And, and we've been really, really happy with it. So thanks.
Thanks.